place? All right. So last week, what we covered was building our part of speech tagger, and we did the default tagger, which tags everything as a noun. We could also tag everything as a verb, but since nouns make up the majority of language, it makes sense to default to noun. This week, what we're going to do is write our own taggers and train our own taggers rather than just say, well, best guess now. Okay. Uh, so regular expressions are a good way to tag parts of speech if you aren't sure. Uh, so they can be kind of a backup to a uh, unigram tagger, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, so we could match common line endings, like ing is a good uh, expression tagger for a verb. It's not always right, but it's close. Right? Um, ed would be good for past tense, that kind of thing. So when you write these, uh, you start with r, so that you're telling it it starts for regex, or regular expression. And we might use special characters, like a slash. It will be matched in order, though. So, if you have a word like wings, uh, it would get tagged with ing if you put it first with ing. So, let's look at how this goes. So, we might set these patterns up here where we have ing but then the end. So, wing would get matched but not wings bah, with an s, just the, um, the one that ended in ing. Remember that this symbol is for end. This is any number of symbols before it. This could be for our gerund tense, present participle. Simple pass for ed, third person singular present for things like walks or goes. So this one won't work very well for walks. Modal, since it would, could, should. Possessives. Plural nouns. Numbers, and then everything else. Default back to noun. So this system should be better than guessing that everything is a noun. It's still not perfect because there are lots of words that match these um, expressions that aren't with the, that selection, like mourning is not a verb. Um, but it's better than just saying everything's a noun. So we set up our little patterns here. We would train our uh, regular expression tagger and the training is just here are the rules. So just like the default tagger, you're not really training like on a data set. You're just telling it, here are the rules. Go do that. And then I can tell it to tag uh, the brown corpus is what we're doing. So dot tag, remember, actually gives, has it do its function where it's tagging. And all of these got marked as noun because none of them met our criteria. So none of them have any of these particular endings. So they all got tagged as regular nouns. Let's pick another set. That's kind of boring. Let's go 50 through 60. Let's see what happens. It's going to take a minute. Okay. Now we can see that some of them are getting tagged differently, right? Thanks. Here got tagged as a plural noun. Okay. How well does this work? So to kind of back up as a reminder, here's how well the default sent the default tagger works. So if we tag everything as a noun, and remember that the brown corpus has many different tags. So we're at the moment not using the we're using the brown tag set, which has like 30 or 40 tags, okay. um, not the universal tag set, which has 10. And so we're actually getting 13% right. So we're doing better than a little better than chance. <laughs> Um, how much better are we getting by using this regular expression set? Okay. And we're actually doing a little bit better. We're getting 20% right. Even though that's better than chance, it's still not very good. Right? So 20% is not anywhere close to what we would want, which would be in the 80s at least, in the 90s at best. So maybe we should try something else. And this is where um, we're going to get into taggers that are much better. Okay, the first two taggers that we cover are really taggers that are meant to be backup systems. So default tagger or regular expression tagger is if all else fails, 
use this. Um, so the lookup tagger is sort of like a dictionary lookup. So we can create key value pairs and then use those to tag other sets. This is common in my field because um, we aren't really working in sentence structure, so we just pick the most common type of speech for a particular word because we're looking at words in, in isolation. Um, <clears throat> so we might do this, and one way we can do this is let's create a frequency distribution. And I just picked the news category to have it. I, I should actually do this across all categories. Um, but what I've done is create a frequency distribution of all the words. Okay. I've pulled out the most common 100 words just to make this run faster. And um, <clears throat> pull, let's see what those are. So we've got the, some punctuation of, and. So remember, these are worker words. Now we'll create a conditional frequency distribution of words by their part of speech. We did this before, just thinking about like how often do nouns occur. So this was really part of chapter three as well. So I've got the conditional frequency distribution of words by part of speech. And I'm going to plug in and make myself a dictionary. So here's our dictionary of the um, of the words by the most frequent part of speech. Okay, so to do that, what I'm going to do is create a loop here. So this uh, this first piece here is the key. Okay. Um, so what's happening? Sorry, I'm trying to like keep the loop together. So we're looping over the words and their part of speech in our most frequent words. So we're only going to pull from our conditional frequency distribution the top 100 most frequent words. Okay. Then we are pulling out the word and its maximum part of speech. Okay. And this is the same thing in Python as doing this. Let's Google define Okay, I'm going to do wind because wind is a strange one. That's a noun and a verb. And when you use Google to find it, it puts the most common part of speech first. So noun is much more likely than verb. And this is the same thing that we do when we're uh, doing our words in isolation is we just pick the most common type. So let's say we just did another word, random word, green. It would most commonly be an adjective. And so this loop here is saying, of the words and their parts of speech, which part of speech is the most common, looping over only the words in my most frequent words. So what you'll see here is that you have the as a determinant or an article of, of as a preposition, but here the way they have prepositions labeled are a little different, and it's conjunction, two is an infinitive, a is a determinant, so it's got them all labeled by their most frequent part of speech. Okay. Now, why would I only do this on 100 words? Shouldn't I do it on all of them? Well, yes, actually you should, but we don't want to be here all day. <laughs> so we picked the 100 most common words uh, to make this run in a reasonable amount of time for class. So that's pretty cool. It creates a, a dictionary of the most common part of speech for our most common words. How much better are we doing? Okay. So what we do is we use the unigram tagger, which we're going to use again in a minute, where we say that the model is the most likely tag from the database, the dictionary we just created. And here's the cool thing, this back off. Okay. Back off means if you've never seen the word before, guess noun. Okay. And so this is our tagger we created last week where we just say, well, if you don't know, it's a noun. Okay. So these are really nice because you can create complex models. It's like try this, then this, then that. And so if I pick only the top most 100 words out of Brown Corpus, even words that are ambiguous that have many different parts of speech, I can go from 20% correct to 60, almost 60% 60 correct 
with that and like best guess is a noun. So knowing what their part of speech is from a previous data set is exponentially better <laughs> than just guessing noun or trying to use some of these regular expression rules. So let's see if we can do even better than that. Um, and we can actually tag train data sets on a, on a unigram tagger. Okay. So in each of these we're using evaluate to determine the accuracy. So this is just the actual tag to the guest tag and it's a proportion correct. And um, we have to do this on a known data set and in this particular set of rules for NLTK it has to be on tagged sentences because it uses sentence structure to help figure it out. Okay. So uh, what's happening is the tagger is sort of guessing based on its, uh, its structure, its rules. The guesses are compared to the real answers and so we get a percent correct out of that. Okay. And evaluation is really important. It tells me how well the function works and it also tell me how the errors. So as we go, we're gonna we're gonna learn more about evaluating and classifying, creating sentence structure, and so we'll always look at the errors that it makes. Okay. Um, so we want to be able to evaluate any kind of um, any kind of function that we're building against a gold standard. Now, the brown corpus has been long considered a gold standard because it, it has been checked so many times. Um, there are newer ones that are probably a little better, but they're not built into this package. Okay. Uh, the pen tree bank is also very popular. That is in, this, in, in LTK. Um, but there's some of the British National Corpus and some other ones that are... Um, half auto-tagged, half human-tagged that might get us even closer to 100% uh, accuracy. Okay. So let's look at the unigram tagger just a little bit more. Okay, so we've talked about the default tagger, make everything a noun. We've talked about the regular expression tagger. Then we just made a dictionary-based tagger, basically. And with the unigram tagger, what we can do is actually tell it to train with the data we have. One moment. The cat is snuck in and eating a box. Okay, mister. You can say hello to everyone. Hello, I'm Evil Cat. Sit down. Nope, nope. I'm now going to be covered in cat hair, but you won't have to listen to a cat chew on the box. All right, so for unigram tagging, we can pick the most common part of speech. Okay. So, for example, the word frequent is most general, generally an adjective, even though it can be a noun. Um, this particular version of this works like the lookup tagger, but this really allows us to do training with our data. So we're actually going to do some real training now. Um, so training occurs when we look at each part of speech and store its most likely tag. Okay. And this is actually even easier than creating the dictionary. Okay. Creating the dictionary is just kind of proof of concept. So most people don't do this unless um, you have to because um, you don't have a, a gold standard set. You just have a, like a dictionary already. But if you have a gold standard set that is tagged with sentences, you can actually make the unigram tagger do this for you. Will you stop? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so this is functionally faster and better than going through all the steps to create the dictionary like we just did. So when you do this, you plug in your tag sentences. It does all of that internal um, frequency distribution stuff for you. Uh, and then, you can, this is training, currently. 
and then we can tell it to tag and let's see what happens. And it should get most of these right because it's seen all of these words before. Okay, it's seen these exact words before, which we'll get into in a minute. If I evaluate its performance, I get 93% correct. You don't get 100% correct because even though I'm training and testing on the same data set, which you should not do, um, uh, it doesn't get them perfectly right because it's not exactly a like, if you see this sentence, tag it this way. What it's doing is it's creating an internal dictionary of, well, here's the word the, that's always a determinant. So the is a determinant. Here's the word frequent, that's generally an adjective. So I'm going to make it an adjective. So it's actually picking the most common part of speech um, internally for you already. Okay, so you'll never get 100% um, correct because uh, it doesn't learn the, the the data set, it learns the most common rules from the data set. Okay. Now, you shouldn't tra train and test on the same data set. That's cheating. So what we just did was cheating. And the general rules for testing and training splits are that you want to train on a very large portion of the data because the more training you have, the better. So we're going to do the 90% of the data. And then we're going to test it on the last 10% of the data. So we need large data sets anyway, and we're going to do a 90-10 split. Okay. That is really common. The fast, the way to do the split, uh, there's a couple different ways. But essentially, I can say, well, I want to know how long is a brown corpus times 90% 90 per 90 or 90.9 proportion make that an integer, print that bad boy out, so it's 90% would be 4160. Okay. I'm going to make some training sentences that are from 0 up to 4160, and I'm going to make some test sentences that are from 4160 to the end. So just split the data set into a 90% training set and a 10% testing set. Now, we're going to train our tagger on just the training set, then evaluate the tagger on just the testing set. And you can see this is a bit more realistic of what we would get. This is 81%, uh, which is good. That's a good part of speech tagger. Uh, obviously, the closer to 100 you get, the better, but um, it's often very difficult to get really high um, because language is so creative and flexible that words, when moved to different parts of, parts of the sentence, can have different parts of speech. And so it's hard to capture every combination of different word uh, options that you have. But we went from 13% guessing a noun, 20% with a regular expression tagger, 60% by guessing the top most 100 words, 80% by training it on all of the words. Okay. So can I do better? Yes, a little bit. Okay. Um, so a unigram tagger only takes its best guess at words in isolation by themselves, one gram, one at a time. An ingram tagger looks at either two tokens, three tokens, four tokens to help disambiguate words in context. So this will help understand when the uh, wind should be a noun versus wind as a verb. Okay. So here's a picture. If I zoom out a little bit, you might see it better. So here's the word we're trying to tag. Its context might be the word before it or the word after it. Okay. Or two words before it, both words and the word after it. So you kind of have to figure out how much context you want to add. And while it would be great to add like many words around it, then you become you run into the data sparsity problem. So if you go higher than a bigram tagger, it's, it doesn't do very well because you have to remember that since language is so creative, you want to have enough combinations of the word sets to accurately train 
And once you get past 2 grams or 5 grams, and you get into 3 grams, um, you're starting to talk about very few instances of each possible three-word combination. So generally, if people do these kind of context-based taggers, that's usually only a bigram. Because you just don't have enough data to do much more than that um, and maintain a good like quality tag, um, a quality answer, like a quality tagger. But to do this, it's like really simple. It does run slowly, um, the bigger the data set. So a bigram tagger instead of unigram tagger, and then you put in your training sentences. And then I just tagged some sentences to see what happened so that you can see what happens. It gets a couple of these words right. And then it hits 13.5, which is a cardinal number, and it has never seen 13.5 before, and it just goes bleh and quits. So the none here means that the whole thing is broken down. So these uh, bigram taggers and more context uh, quickly lose speed. <laughs> like they quickly become problematic. So what we can do um, if we evaluate, you can see that we dropped below our, our lowest level tag everything is a noun. Because what happens is, is it, it gets stuck and it just quits. So what we can do actually to improve is uh, add them all together. <laughs> so uh, the reason that this doesn't work is as we increase the n and n-gram, the context specificity is the fancy phrase for the um, specific uh, word sets increases. Um, and that means that the likelihood of seeing those specific combinations decreases, which is called the sparse data problem. Um, so as the specificity increases, the algorithm does get better, but because it doesn't see those specific instances very often, it tends to fail because it just doesn't have enough data to deal with that kind of uh, complexity. So what we do is we just throw them all in together. So we can say, okay, Lowest level default is that it's a noun, best guess. Next level is a unigram tagger, where we have tagged, trained it on our training sentences. And if it doesn't know, guess noun. Then might as well add the, the usefulness of a bigram tagger. But if you run into something you've never seen, go back to the unigram tagger. And then that defaults back up here. So if you've never seen a word at the unigram tagger, go back to noun. And so this kind of like cascading system allows us to use the, the usefulness of context, but not have the problem of data sparsity, where if the context isn't there, skip it and try something else. And so we got about to about 85%, which is um, not bad. So adding that bigram piece, we went from about 80% to about 85%. So, uh, better than um, just guessing, right? So if you want to save a trainer, so if you're going to do this for your um, final project, uh, or you have a very large data set you're working with, there's a whole section in the book on how to save trainers and output them so that you don't have to run them over and over again. Um, so the larger the training data set, the longer this will take to run. And if you're working with a very big data set, you obviously don't want to run it over and over again or you'll fry your computer. So um, what you can do is save it for later. Uh, nothing we are going to do for classes that large. That should take a long time to run. Now it might be running a little slow, but it's not. Um, we're not talking about taking days to run like some of these do. All right, so that is chapter five.